I wanted to welcome you all here to the Fresno Chaffee Zoo where we're celebrating World Turtle Day. Uh, we're going to take you on a little tour of some of the areas behind the scenes that have some of the really interesting species that we work with here at our facility. The Fresno Chaffee Zoo houses about 12 or 13 different species of uh, turtle and or tortoise in our collection and a vast majority of them are part of some managed programs here at the zoo. Uh, in general, turtles and tortoises are considered to be one of the most endangered types of animals found in the world. Just about every species is, is experiencing some kind of decline wherever they're found. The United States is pretty unique in that it is home to many, many amazing turtle species and most of those are having problems wherever they're, they're located. Turtles are extremely sensitive to environmental changes and habitat as well as habitat destruction as well as changes in their populations and over collection and collecting for food as decimated populations around the world. They're a long 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 lived species. Most turtles and tortoises could live many many years and given their long ages it takes them a long time to get to reproductive maturity so that Whenever they're, they get to that point, it takes a long time and they don't produce a lot of uh, eggs during their, their nesting season. So removing any animals from a population can really change it significantly. So I hope you enjoy our little walk around the zoo and, and get a chance to meet some of our really amazing species that we have here off exhibit. Hi, we're standing in our one of our behind the scenes holding rooms here at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo in our amazing reptile building. What we have housed in here is uh, we have two pairs of southern spider tortoises, which are a critically endangered small tortoise species from southern Madagascar. They have a very restricted range, and in the wild they're blinking out very quickly due to overcollection for food and the bushing tree. Uh, we have had a couple of these uh, types of tortoises for many years here. They actually were part of a confiscation in the early 80s, and they were brought to us from a private individual, and we were able to assume care of them at that time. We've been working with this species and trying to get them to reproduce over the course of several years. Um, one of the reasons why they're in this room is the humidity levels stay nice and high. And these guys are, are kind of love their humidity and like their temperatures to sort of vary up into the low 80s. And this room is really ideal for that. This is the adult size. They don't get any bigger than this. They're very small, diminutive uh, species. They do like to spend their time in the, the dense sort of under canopy snacking on mushrooms and other sort of little plants that grow out there. Being a small tortoise species, they only lay about one to two eggs per year and they're very seasonal. Uh, they're amazing little guys here. And again, we have two different uh, pairs here that are unrelated. They were brought in from the wild in the 80s. They were confiscated at the uh, LA airport. We're now in our incubation room, which is where we have our uh, incubation setups behind the scenes, as well as some of the younger animals that we have here at the zoo. One of the animals that we're going to talk about here is, is a pretty uh, incredible species that is essentially going extinct in the wild. This is a three-year-old Vietnamese box turtle that was hatched here at, our, at the zoo. We have a, a really successful pair of adults that are on exhibit here, but this is one of the kids here. He, uh, he was hatched here. Uh, the amazing thing is, is actually they need to get a pretty low temperature, so room temperature is pretty close to what they need in the mid 70s, which is kind of typical for those Asian uh, forest species. These guys are in the wild are, are receiving an extreme amount of pressure from overcollection for the food and, and traditional medicine tree, and essentially whenever they're found, they're collected and brought in to be sold for for that type of process. He's hatched here. Uh, the Vietnamese box, Vietnamese box turtles are extremely variable. They have lots of different colors on their shell. This is one that tends to be more yellow. Some of the other species in that, that group of animals can be a little bit more red. And uh, kind of reminds you of these box turtles you see here in the US on the East Coast. Uh, but again, these guys are a little bit more aquatic. They like to be in the mud and the swamps. I mean, sometimes they like to dump their bladder and get rid of water when they're being held. And uh, we feed him a nice little mix of some really good salads and animal protein in the form of earthworms, crickets, uh, sometimes mealworms, and other things along with the set. Okay. It's cool here. These are the incubators that we use here at the Fresno Chappie Zoo. Uh, they're typical cabinet types, but in these uh, incubators we have uh, a group of radiated tortoise eggs that are cooking along at 85 degrees. 
and next to it is actually a really interesting, very essential piece of equipment when you're dealing with some uh, when you're dealing with tortoises that come from Madagascar and some other areas. They the eggs need to be cooled down for a certain portion of their incubation cycle. Uh, typically, an egg from a, a radiated tortoise or from a spider tortoise or a flower shirt tortoise or um, something like that would need to be cooled down for a portion of their incubation. So they temperatures in the wild, they would lay their eggs at the beginning of the rainy season when it's cooler and as the temperature is warm, the eggs would start um, uh, developing at that point. And that process is called diapause. And what that does is it allows the eggs to hatch at an appropriate time for those little individuals to come out and find their food in the wild. So we will cool our eggs for a period of time and then incubate them at a warm temperature and check for fertility after that. Galapagos tortoises have had a long history here at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. They've been part of our collection for many, many years, starting in the 60s. I'm sure you're all familiar with our wonderful adult male, Nobby, who's on exhibit in front of a reptile building. But recently we brought in two younger animals who were hatched at the St. Augustine alligator farm in North Florida. Nobby is a hybrid. We're not sure exactly of what two types of uh, subspecies of Galapagos tortoise, but these are actually a known subspecies. They're uh, Vulcan Island Galapagos tortoises, which are very restricted in range. And they're part of a managed program here in the, the zoo world, uh, part of an EZA SSP, Species Survival Plan. They're only about six years old, about the size of a basketball, and they can, will continue to grow and get up to about the size of Nobby once they're fully, fully adults. But that'll be a long time from now. And right now we're just enjoying spending time with our young Galapagos tortoises here outside chewing on clover. This is a juvenile Asian brown tortoise. The Asian brown tortoise is found in Southeast Asia, specifically from the countries and areas in Burma. It is part of a special survival program, like a good number of our turtle, turtle and tortoise species that we have here at the zoo. This animal was hatched several years ago, and it was actually a specific uh, breeding recommendation that helped produce these animals. Uh, we have a group of adults here on exhibit uh, at the zoo, and they are a pretty cool species because uh, they're one of the few turtle species that build a, a nest above ground. The females will pull leaves together into a large pile and lay their eggs inside the pile of leaves where the rotting action of the leaves produces heat to help incubate those eggs. Uh, they're, in addition, the females actually do a really cool behavior where they actually spend time near the nest defending it from potential predators. So when we saw a mound of uh, leaves forming on exhibit and our female got really nasty when we walked in there. We kind of knew that there were eggs in that exhibit, so we pulled them to the reptile building and put them in some incubators for them to cook along for about 70 or 80 days. Again, once these animals are large enough, they will actually go to another zoo to participate in the breeding program at another facility where they'll be paired up with some other females and hopefully produce some young in the next few years. We are now behind the scenes in one of our areas that houses uh, some of our turtle and tortoise species that we keep off exhibit. This is an adult female western pond turtle. We have a group of four adults, one male and three females, and three juveniles that are reproduced here a few years back. The western pond turtle is a, a safe species through AZA, which means that it's a part of a saving animals from extinction, which means it's a multifaceted effort to try to save these guys from going extinct in the wild. The western pond turtle is near and dear to us here at the Chaffee Zoo because it is the only endemic pond turtle, a turtle in fact, turtle in general that you find here in California. Uh, it, historically, it was common throughout most of the West Coast, ranging from British Columbia all the way down to Baja, Mexico, but their numbers have dropped dramatically over the last 50 years. It was mainly due to habitat changes that have happened wherever they're found. A lot of their uh, pristine river and, and, and stream habitat was dammed up and put into aqu aqueducts to move water into agricultural fields, and it really changed their habitat significantly and it's causing them to have undue pressures in the wild. And we've been working with western pond turtles here for pretty much since the 70s, uh, many 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 years here and in recent uh, years the Chaffee Zoo has actually funded several conservation projects that work closely with the species both in captivity and in the wild. Uh, we Most recently we funded a project to check the genetic lineage of all the western pond turtles found in zoos in the U.S. in order to help uh, delineate what people are ho housing in their zoo. And the reason we did that is that uh, recently western pond turtles were split into two different species and for a long time people did not know what they had. So using uh, DNA PCR techniques with the assistance of Fresno State, we were able to get genetic uh, typing on all of the western pond turtles in captivity to figure out 
what they have, whether it's a northern western pond turtle or a southern western pond turtle. Again, we have uh, four animals here in our tub, as well as three juveniles that were hatched here at the zoo. I wanted to thank you all for taking a tour with me behind the scenes where we had a chance to meet some of our amazing turtle and tortoise residents here at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. Uh, I hope that you guys gained a better appreci appreciation for some of the stuff that we do here at the zoo where it involves turtles and tortoises. And uh, like me, I hope it really sort of fostered that love of those amazing animals.